Ay, 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 noid milvadoi, noid veloi kolorets kevoi do mavoi, hakadosh baruchu vani avdoi. There is no one and nothing but him. Ain od milvado. Welcome to the Humble Brag Podcast. I'm Nate Mendel. And I just want to share a little tidbit about Amuna. Amuna is the full and complete faith in one loving God. There are three principles of Amuna. You can learn about it in the Garden of Amuna. Number one, Hashem does everything. Number two, everything that Hashem does is for our good. And number three is everything that Hashem does has a purpose. I was first introduced to these more intricate and profound understandings of Amuna when I was about 17, so about 13 years ago. And you know what I learned? In 13 years, you know what major epiphany I've come to after 13 years of learning and living Amuna? I've come to the realization that I have no Amuna. (laughs) Now, I shouldn't say I don't have any Amuna, but I certainly don't have deep intrinsic levels of Amuna. I would say that I'm floating more on surface level. My friend, there is surface level Amuna. That's the Amuna that we learn in the book. It's the Amuna that we try to implement. It's the Amuna that we live our life with. And then there is deep intrinsic levels of Amuna. What's the difference? Well, perhaps the best way to understand it is to look at knowledge. We know through our teachings that the epitome of knowledge is knowing that we know nothing. Every true wise person, intellectual, sage, understood that they understood nothing. They've brought down these lessons and these understandings. But what does that mean? A professor who spends their entire life learning something knows nothing. It's a philosophical and psychological concept, but the bottom line is the more you know, the more you realize how much you don't know. And when it comes to knowledge specifically, I was watching this lecture by Joey Rosenfeld, really brilliant young guy. He has videos on all kinds of topics where he was explaining intrinsically that we don't really know anything. There's nothing that is really knowable at its source. So depending on how you want to look at it, you can look at it from the perspective that as you gain knowledge, you realize how little you know. So therefore, you realize that you don't really know anything because knowledge can be infinite, just like Hashem is infinite. It's it's just a never ending concept. And we don't even understand what infinity means, (laughs) let alone knowledge. We don't even understand what infinity means, what infinity actually entails. Infinity itself is so unknown with regards to our universe, physics, and everything that's measurable. So we don't even understand infinity, but we still believe that God is an infinite concept. Knowledge is an infinite concept. So the more we learn, the more we realize that we're not even scratching the surface because it's infinite. Does that even make sense? Hardly, but that's still the consensus. Another way to look at it, and perhaps you would get to this understanding through a lot of learning as well, is that spiritually we can't really know anything period, at its source. We don't really know anything. We know the outer layers, the manifestations of things, the way in which things materialize in a physical sense, but we don't know it at its core, at its source. We're trying to. Scientists are obsessed with the subatomic level and the grand spectrum of space and and exploration outer. So we're actively exploring and trying to understand the deep levels of matter itself, which takes us into a subatomic world. And at some point, even that is cut off to us. Similarly, we're exploring as far as we can out. And the furthest we can go is come up with theories of, you know, multi-universe and trying to take pictures of black holes and trying to understand those types of concepts. So from tiny to huge, we don't really understand or know anything other than its manifestations, okay? But we don't even have to go that deep. We understand that we understand nothing. It's a very common lesson in Judaism and various other frameworks. And if we understand that, then we could probably understand the notion that there's surface level amuna, and then there's intrinsic level amuna. And I won't venture to say that nobody reaches full and complete intrinsic level amuna that might go against some of our traditions about particular characters in our past, but I would say something very close to it. We don't really achieve a complete 100% Amuna, which would be some type of form of 
complete and utter surrender and acceptance on the most intricate and deep levels. And to observe this phenomenon practically, think about the way that we live our amuna, how we interact with it, and what the results of that are. So surface level amuna, which is in its own right a huge gift, and very few people are tapping into it in terms of population, is you learn the education and you implement it into your life. Difficulties arise, thank you Hashem, something happens, you understand that it's from Hashem, you understand that it's for your good, so you're grateful for it, and you go about living your life in this manner. There are times when you're happy, dancing and singing, ecstatic, you're really feeling it, but then there are times when difficulties arise, they're very difficult. Let's think about the big events, the big discomforts. It could be in the form of losing a job, a business closing down, the end of a relationship, divorce, problems with your children, the big stuff, your child not being accepted into schools. What are some of the biggest stresses, some of the biggest stuff, right? Think about the stuff that actually affected you in your life, things that either got you depressed, the things that made you feel negative, the things that brought you down, right? We all have them. We're not angels. So things have actually bothered us and things continue to bother us. The only way that things really move us and bother us in a negative way is if we're lacking complete amuna. Hence why I'm saying 13 years of learning and implementing amuna has taught me that I don't really have any intrinsic level amuna. Because if I did, I wouldn't be moved by the things that have moved me, period. Intrinsic and deep levels of amuna would entail really feeling, not saying, feeling that the most difficult times, the things that are actually bothering us are from Hashem and therefore wouldn't bother us. Not just telling ourselves, and that's the difference. Surface level, intrinsic. Surface level is we tell ourselves, sure, when I was facing the difficulty, I was saying, thank you, Hashem. I was telling myself my education. I was reminding myself and I was acknowledging this is difficult, but I know that it's from Hashem. You know, we're going to get through this, but that's still surface level. When we're gifted with intrinsic level, and sometimes we are gifted with intrinsic level amuna for brief periods in certain situations, the entire work, the avodah, is to get to the point where we feel that all the time or close to all the time, but I don't know if a human being is capable of feeling that all the time. But the more work we put in, the more personal prayer, the vacos and attachment and, and nullification and bittul and the more work we put in, in our relationship with Hashem, the more often we feel intrinsic amuna when situations arrive. In other words, we're tuned into the source, we're one with existence rather than feeling like a separate part experiencing, you know, what may be negative. But if we're not like super tuned in and plugged in, then the likelihood of feeling that all the time and consistently is very low. Hence why I'm saying surface level. So there is this surface level amuna, it's education level. We believe it. It is. It makes up our values. It certainly forms a lot of them. It allows us to live a principled life and it allows us to live a good life, a positive life in comparison to everything else around us in this world. But when that's not enough, because you are on a personal quest and journey to find true inner peace, true connection and oneness, you'll realize that you want to tap into intrinsic. And again, intrinsic amuna refers to a state in which we are spiritually, that we feel that whatever is taking place is the divine manifestation, and it shouldn't be any other way, and you don't feel any desire for it to be any other way, and therefore you're not affected by it for the way that it is. In this regard, it is almost like knowledge. It is almost completely unknowable and unattainable, at least for your average person. I believe there were a couple sages and rabbis in the past who have been labeled with reaching a complete and wholesome level of Amuna. I forget offhand, uh, for some reason, Rabbi Akiva comes to mind, maybe Moses, but I may be wrong. It's a very, very unique and lofty position. It's just not the type of thing that your average, even pious person could really obtain, especially in such a physical and material world. But nevertheless, that's what we strive for, because as difficulties mount and they become bigger and seemingly too hard to deal with, 
the only solution is to find deeper and inner level amuna, which entails complete and profound acceptance and surrender. And that's when you realize, wow, the levels at which I need to surrender now and allow Hashem to take charge, where was that before? Well, before you weren't even challenged in these ways. So you didn't even know that your level of amuna was surface. The more you confront the things that bother you in life, the more you confront your difficulties, the more you look at your nature, your psychology, why are you not happy? Why are you upset? What's bothering you? The more you realize, wow, there's so much work, so much profound work that needs to take place in the Amuna department. So that simple book that we were learning 13 years ago is far from simple. It's far from obtained. Now we could bust it back out and start digging in because it's a lifelong work. It's a lifelong journey. And it's going to take years upon years of grinding and hard work, hard spiritual, emotional and mental work to start really obtaining the deep and intrinsic messages of it. The outer layer, the black and white text that we read growing up and maturing, that was great to get us to here. Now you want to level up. Now you want to figure out what your real purpose in life is, how you're really going to solve your tikkun, how you're really going to transform into the potential that you are, so on and so forth. Now we really have to dig in. Now we're really going to have to find our faith and our surrender on a whole deeper level. Surrender just refers to trust, bitachon. The word surrender almost has like this non-Jewish connotation to it because the Christians use it all the time, surrendering to Jesus. But surrender for us has a deeper connection to trust. In order to trust, you must surrender. So that's it. There's not much else to say. Let's get motivated. Let's get motivated because motivation is what's needed to like continue tackling it. Like I want to understand it deeper. I want to go deeper. I want to get closer. Whatever I knew until now, great. It got me till here. Lots of success, lots of happiness, lots of good times, but it's not enough. I have a purpose. I have struggles. I have difficulties. Hashem, I want to find deeper, more intrinsic levels of Amuna to get past them. I'm acknowledging it's not going to be easy. There's no easy way out. I'm not going to run to medication. I'm not going to run to substances. I'm not going to sit on the couch and binge. I'm not going to succumb to my bodily urges. These are all cop-outs. Wiggle and weaving, trying to do everything in our power to avoid what's right in front of us. Inevitability, which is the unknown. But it's not unknown to us because it's Hashem. We'll never understand it at its source. Therefore, Amuna. We're never going to be able to fully make sense of it. Therefore, trust, surrender with Hashem's help. Peace. Leave a like and subscribe. Subscribe.